prior to the lovable Blue Logos boom and gracious host welcome making its way to the televisions of America, a few Bad Apple quiz shows had to do their time for the crime in the great quiz show scandal of the 1950s. Before we dive in, take the time to study up on the information at hand. Throw us a like, a follow, a subscribe. Now that that's out of the way, let's get back to the show. It wasn't long after the invention of the television that game show and quizzing programs began making their on-screen debut. While multiple game shows were caught up in the rigging scandal, the creme de la creme of all these was 21. 21 was a simple question and answer game, with two competitors battling against one another to reach a 21 point total from correct responses. Just two telecasts into the NBC quiz show, a man named Herbert Stempel, soon to be known as the quiz rigging scandal whistleblower, applied to be a contestant. Herbert was an honest, brilliant man with genuine intentions. At the time of his application, he was a 29 year old college student and a graduate from the Bronx High School of Science, with an above average IQ score. Knowing his worth and abilities for a contest of this nature, he wrote to the producers with an interest in competing on the show. And to no surprise, a few days later he received his invitation to come on board. Daniel Enright, one of the show's producers, visited Herbert at his home soon after and made him a deal he could not refuse. $25,000 to follow a script, portray a character, and demonstrate a dorky persona once in front of the camera. For five weeks, Daniel and Herbert rehearsed questions, answers, show orders, deliberate mistakes, stage directions, and even gestures, down to eyebrow raises and verbal pauses. Herbert's little deal landed him just under a cool $50,000 by the time his final opponent, Charles Van Doren, entered the scene. Once the two made it to a third show ending in a tie, Herbert caught on that Charles was likely in on the action as well. His good old buddy Daniel was pulling the rug right out from under him, saying that the show had reached a plateau and it was time for a change. Enter Charles, bid adieu to Herbert. On the morning of his final show, the hype surrounding the battle of a lifetime was at an all-time high. Would Herbert leave with the greatest prize in 21 history? Unfortunately, inevitably, he would not. The final question was asked, and though he knew the correct answer, Marty, everyone knows it's Marty. Herbert blew the contest as scripted. Oh, and over $100,000. Honestly, does anyone else feel like a little bad for Herbert? His initial intention was to be true and genuine and on the show. I mean, sure, he sold out for the cash, that was on him, but then to be shoved to the side for a newer and shinier model, throw out the over $100,000 winnings right out the window. Huge bummer. I personally sympathize with the guy just a little bit. Following this major loss and producer Daniel Enright's broken promises of more money and a high salary job, Herbert tried to tell the world that the show was rigged. However, his story fell on deaf ears due to lack of physical evidence. It wasn't until many years later when other popular shows at the time started to fall under closer review that the papers finally printed Herbert's story. The scandal ended up in front of Congress, which investigated the claims and evidence of both Herbert Stemple and another 21 contestant, James Snodgrass, who had also been given answers on the show and they concluded that the show was in fact rigged. Though it's a bummer to hear the series of events ultimately leading to the demise of quizzing shows, at least for a while, we have them to thank for the creation of one of our favorites, Jeopardy! Every night at home, right after the six o'clock news, the voice of everyone's favorite game show host, Alex Trebek, echoed through our living room. This is Jeopardy! I can't be the only one who played along from the kitchen table, choosing categories, price values, and taking my best whack at the what is answer. Shout out to producer Merv Griffin for reviving a fair, honest, and knowledge-based show that allows contestants to win some, lose some, and have a great time. What is the end of this episode? I just have to know though, are you team Herbert or are you team 21? Let me know down in the comments below while I hunt for the Daily Double. Catch you next time again here on Ripley's Rewind.